AMD is kicking off our week with a ton of CPU news. They're talking about the 5700X3D, so there's new AM4 parts, multiple of them actually. Also, we talked about the 8000G APUs for AM5, and uh, then they have some other mobile discussion points as well. There might be graphics news. That'll be a separate video, if so, because it has a separate uh, keynote, and that's because right now is CES, which is a major trade show for the hardware industry. We're gonna have a lot of hardware coverage this week. It's starting with the silicon providers first, so NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, uh, we'll see about Intel, don't know actually right now, but all of them should have major announcements we'll be covering separately, and then we'll probably have case and cooler coverage as well. But we're gonna focus on AMD for this one. So uh, mostly the interesting news is gonna be the AM4 stuff and then APUs for AM5. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Montec and the King 95 Pro case. The King 95 Pro is a dual chamber enclosure with configurable options for storage and power supplies. The K95 has a deep 35 millimeter cable channel for management, support for dual power supplies if you want it, which could be useful for a Threadripper system, and ample radiator and fan mounting options scattered around the top, back, bottom, side, and front of the case. The front also can be mesh or solid, with the mesh running a higher porosity for more breathability. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so first up, we were pre-briefed for this, which means we got the news in advance. If AMD says anything else that's interesting during its presentation, it's gonna be stuff we'll talk about in a separate hardware news video because we filmed this before that presentation went live. Uh, but we should have pretty much everything from what they've told us. Okay, AM4 CPU is where we're gonna start with this. So AM4, uh, AMD's putting more stuff out for it. There's the 5700X3D, which is in the rumors not too long ago. It noted the 5700 non-X, non-3D, non-G, just 5700. That'll launch to AM4 as well for DIY. It's already been on the market for OEM, uh, but it, it was never like formally launched for DIY availability in a box with a cooler and everything. And then it also announced the 5600 GT and the 5500 GT, all these AM4 CPUs. Now, these were only expected because of the leaks, but up until that point, I think it was probably safe to assume that pretty much everyone thought the 5600X3D was going to be the last one, and even that one was a surprise launch. Uh, and that's just because you look at, I looked it up, AM4 officially, technically, launched in 2016, and then it you know, really gained relevance in 2017 with the first Ryzen CPU launches. So that means this platform is getting new processors now about eight years after its launch, or seven since the launch of the relevant Ryzen stuff that's kind of in recent memory. So actually completely insane when you think about the age of the platform. That is the longest lived socket that uh, I have personally ever worked on in consumer testing in the last you know, 15 years we've been doing this. So anyway, let's cover the new parts. The 5700X3D is an eight core, 16 thread CPU that runs 4.1 gigahertz boost on 3.0 base with a 100 megabyte uh, cache and 105 watt TDP. Jumping over to the 5800X3D specs, the previous one, they're overall similar. The 58X3D is an 8-core 16-thread part as well. It has a 105-watt TDP as well. And likewise, 100 megabytes of combined L2 and L3 cache at 4 megabytes and 96 megabytes. The difference here is the clock speed. So the 58X3D ran at 3.4 gigahertz base and 4.5 gigahertz boost. That means it's about 400 megahertz faster than the 5700X3D. So that means the new 5700X3D is basically a 5800X3D except slower in frequency. It's 400 megahertz down or so. Uh, across the board, and MSRP is $250, and um, how much that clock reduction will impact performance will depend on the application. A couple scenarios we can think about right now that where it would be the most relevant. One of them would be in scenarios where uh, it's largely single-threaded, it's, it's like 100% load on one thread, and it cares about frequency. In those instances, you're going to see a bigger swing between the 58 and 5700 X3D. And then the other one would maybe obviously be an all-core workload depending on the all-core boost frequency of the new CPU, uh, where something like Blender, full 100% full, uh, load all cores, you might have some deviation of performance, especially over an extended period of time where that frequency starts to really accumulate and add up in terms of the impact to something like render time. But depends on the all-core boost frequency, because right now we don't have that specific number. We'll be testing that in our reviews. We noticed recently that 5800X3D was starting to jump around in price where third-party sellers would sometimes kind of overtake the listings as they were running dry. So depending on if that's permanent and if AMD will continue making 5800 X3Ds, it might be the case that the 57 3D will replenish that segment to hold the prices down a little longer. At the time of pre-briefing, AMD didn't have any first-party comparisons against its 5800 X3D with its 57. Uh, it did compare against the 13600K. Won't bother really going over those, but 
Uh, they looked roughly similar to what we've seen on our own testing for the 13600K versus the 5800X3D. So they should be fairly similar parts, the two of them. Uh, but obviously, we'll test it in our review, and you can make a decision then. The AMD R7 5700CPU is the one that's not new because it's been available in OEM systems. You can find it on AliExpress, sometimes eBay. But AMD is now selling it as a box processor with an included Wraith Spire cooler, so they're making it official. As a refresher, the 5700 is an 8-core, 16-thread part. It has 20 megabytes of cache. There's no 3D cache on it. A 65-watt TDP and a base and boost of 3.7 gigahertz and 4.6. For reference, the 5700X runs at 3.4 gigahertz base and 4.6 gigahertz boost, but it has 32 megabytes of L3 and four megabytes of L2. So the 5700X and the 5700 are actually, in this regard, very different. Also, the PCI generational support is different. So the 5700X has Gen 4 support, whereas the 5700 stops at PCIe Gen 3. In this regard, the 5700 is more comparable to a 5700G just without that IGP. Uh, and then as for price, AMD noted that it'll be $175 MSRP for the 5700. And then finally, in the AM4 lineup, AMD announced the 5600 GT and 5500 GT. These are both six core 12 thread parts with 19 megabytes of cache and a 65 watt TDP per AMD's definition of TDP. They also include IGPs. Boost is 4.6 gigahertz for the 5600 GT and 4.4 for the 5500 GT. And we'll show AMD's first party charts for these ones. Compared to the existing 5600G, AMD presents the 5500 GT as equal or marginally better, depending on the application. Another slide shows the 5600 GT versus the 5600G. It's similar here, just with a higher ceiling for the relative comparison. The biggest gaming improvement was PUBG. These parts will ship for $140 for the 5600 GT and $125 for the 5500 GT. And uh, we're excited to see the platform being kept alive. It's pretty interesting. It becomes a science experiment at this point, or social experiment maybe, where uh, AMD or consumers, I guess, kind of testing each other for how long will people keep buying these things? And maybe not great for motherboard vendors, generally speaking, if say half of the sales or whatever are you know, pulling numbers out of the air, but are uh, upgrades because they're not selling new boards, but should be good for AMD and definitely good for, for the market overall. And then also, as a reminder for uh, just people in our, our North American audience and large parts of our European audience, in other markets outside of those segments, you typically see the older parts have longer survivability. They're more viable because that price really matters in certain market segments. So it should help keep the AM4 platform alive in the market in areas of the world where cost control matters more and uh, keeping components as modern as possible without going brand new is beneficial for a, a value standpoint. So anyway, let's move on to the 8000G APUs. So the 8700G and the 8600G are the major ones. There's a couple others. And AMD announced, in addition to these, the 8500G and the 8300G, which get a little bit more confusing. So the 8700G is an 8-core, 16-thread part. It boosts to 5.1 gigahertz, has 24 megabytes of cache. TDP is 65 watts. The AMD 780M integrated graphics processor is included, which is an RDNA 3 part with 12 CUs. The 8600G drops to 6 cores, 12 threads, and 5 gigahertz boost. It has a predictable cache reduction aligned with the core reduction. And the 760M replaces the 780M here for the 8600G, which drops to 8 CUs from 12. And that CU difference will be the more notable impact because it's uncommon for anyone who's using uh, integrated graphics instead of a DGPU to experience a CPU limitation in games with these particular CPUs. Can happen, more likely though, you're gonna be running into GPU binds. So 760 to 780 uh, is gonna be the, the larger change there to take note of for most gaming scenarios without a DGPU. The 8500G is a six core 12 thread part. We'll come back to that. It's boosting to five gigahertz. It hosts 22 megabytes of cache and it drops to a 740M IGP. 740M only has four CUs, a pretty big drop there. Finally, the 8300G will be an OEM part for now. Uh, it's a four core, eight thread APU boosting to 4.9 gigahertz and hosting 12 megabytes of cache. It also uses a 740M. As an important note here, the core configuration architecturally is not the same across all four of these. Uh, AMD's names are confusing, but it was at least forthcoming about it. So we can have the snake oil discussion with Intel a little bit later. Uh, although they did an excellent job of explaining AMD's naming schema. The 8700G and 8600G APUs use Zen 4 architecture, whereas the 8500G uses a mix of Zen 4 
with Zen 4C with four cores on Zen 4C. And the 8300G has three cores on Zen 4C and one on Zen 4. Now Zen 4C cores have a smaller aerial footprint than Zen 4 cores and they sacrifice the clock frequency and L3 cache per core in order to enable that. The APUs will support AMD's fluid motion frames, so frame generation will help boost frame rate in borderline scenarios there. Uh, and then we'll briefly show some of their first party claims here because uh, some of these are sort of intra comparisons or just against themselves. And remember that the benchmarks will evaluate all this soon enough from third parties like us and other reviewers. So AMD 780M and 8700G benchmarks at 1080p low compared against nothing else ran at 63 FPS average in Cyberpunk 2077, 68 in Valhalla, 165 in Dota. You really need to look at the frame times for these though, just to have some more certainty on the performance. And these APUs are generally best paired for games like Dota, League, Rocket League, similar titles that are commonly called quote unquote esports games. AMD also showed its 8700G and 8600G solutions against the 14700K. For this, all of them are running their IGPs. AMD is claiming significant advantages in most cases with parity in one, and we'll validate in our review. The most interesting tests for APUs like this are normally going to be a the cheap as possible CPU plus cheap as possible DGPU solution. So in our review, we'll likely be looking at that where we take something like a 12100F or whatever the, the total, you know, uh, cost is equivalent to plus a low-end GPU, pair them together and see how that compares to just the APU running solo. And, um, and that'll be kind of one of our, our main benchmarks there to see if it's worth it. Now with an APU, you could theoretically drop a DGPU in later as well if you wanted to. But let's move on to Andy's last CPU announcement for the show, which was mobile series processors. So this is the 8040 processors. Uh, these are mobile solutions. We won't spend a ton of time on this because we don't really cover mobile other than in handheld devices. But uh, some of these are nearly the same as the 7000 predecessors aside from the NPU. Andy's big change here is its addition of more local AI processing capabilities. And the dedicated NPU or neural processing unit is supposed to be better for AI workloads. So we don't cover these benchmarks right now. We'll show some of their first party stuff, uh, but we are not familiar enough with these AI benchmarks that they're showing to provide any meaningful rebuttal of their claims or support of their claims. So keep that all in mind. We'll leave that topic for more AI-centric outlets. On the gaming side, the big one is the R78840U. It has a 780M graphic solution. The 7840U, the prior one, also had a 780M. And actually, these parts are basically the same other than the AI processing capabilities. So if you're choosing between the two, unless you have some sort of local AI workload, uh, and you want to run a mobile part, you basically consider them the same for something like gaming. So that's it for AMD CES announcements. As noted, we'll have some NVIDIA coverage as well. Uh, right now, I was filming, I'm not 100% sure which goes first because there's a lot of them are happening on the same day. We will theoretically be getting something from Intel, but not sure what that is at this time. Probably a lot of mobile stuff, uh, maybe some Meteor Lake. But anyway, check back for all that as we progress through the week. The most interesting stuff here is going to be AM4 and the 8000G APUs for AM5, at least from our coverage spectrum. So go to store.gamersaccess.net to support us directly. You can grab our brand new Disappointment 2023 t-shirt with the Disappointment Tour dates on it and a exploded memory module diagram on the front with a spinal memory architecture outline on the back. These are limited and we're selling through very fast. So if you want to grab one, they are in stock. They're shipping right now. And this is the only production run. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net. And as always, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and check back soon. There's a lot more news coverage coming up for this week. We'll see you all next time.